For Pluralsight, I'm David Tucker, and this is Cloud Tracker on Microsoft Azure. This is the post Microsoft Build Edition, so we are going to have a lot to dive into. At Pluralsight, we know that one of the biggest challenges cloud developers, administrators, DevOps, engineers, and architects face is keeping up to date with new services, concepts, and resources, and that's why we're bringing you Cloud Tracker. My name is David Tucker, and I am an author at Pluralsight and a cloud strategist. Each month, I'll give you key insights and platform updates for Microsoft Azure. In addition, I'll highlight key resources that you can leverage to take your skills to the next level. Now that we have that out of the way, let's dive into the updates for May 2021. Now, it's hard to know where to start this month, but I'm just going to jump in with Cosmos DB. Microsoft didn't just make one announcement for this service. Instead, they made seven. And I just want to run through these with you. First, serverless provisioning for Cosmos DB is now generally available for all APIs of the service. This means that developers creating solutions that have large amounts of time where their database is idle, which is especially true for development workloads, can now take advantage of this capability and likely achieve cost savings. Next, the free tier for Cosmos DB has been greatly expanded upon for the provisioned option. You can now get up to 1,000 request units and 25 gigabytes of storage, which is up from 405 gigabytes. Next, for developers on Linux and Mac OS, Microsoft is now offering a local development emulator for those platforms. And it's now in preview for the SQL API only. Next, there are two new features that are in preview, the Cosmos DB integrated cache and the always encrypted feature, the latter of which ensures that your data is always encrypted before being stored in the database. For those of you that are leveraging role-based access control for Cosmos DB, you should know that this capability is now generally available. Finally, Cosmos DB now supports partial path level updates of documents. This feature is supported for the SQL API, and right now it's available for the .NET and Java SDKs, as well as stored procedures. Note though, this feature is currently in private preview. You can sign up to request access to it from the link that I have provided in the episode notes. Next, at Build, Microsoft announced a new breed of AI service, the Applied AI Services. These services are designed to provide an even easier entry point for machine learning integration into key business processes over what you would get with just cognitive services. Now, some of these services like the Azure Form Recognizer aren't new, but what's new is how they're grouped together. At the launch, this category included Azure Form Recognizer, Azure Metrics Advisor, Azure Cognitive Search, Azure Bot Service, Azure Immersive Reader, and a brand new solution, Azure Video Analyzer. Behind the scenes, these services all leverage Azure Cognitive Services but they are created to solve a single specific problem that businesses face. You can read more about these services in the announcement blog post that I have linked to in the episode notes. All of the major cloud providers are working to provide solutions for the hybrid and multi-cloud space. Azure took a major step in this direction with the announcement that customers can run Azure's application services on Kubernetes or on any hardware when leveraging Azure Arc. Back in March, Microsoft announced that Azure Arc-enabled Kubernetes was generally available, and this announcement greatly extends on the capabilities of that platform. Microsoft states that any cloud-native computing foundation conformant Kubernetes cluster connected through Azure Arc is now a supported deployment target for Azure application services. This means organizations can run Azure App Service, Azure Functions, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Event Hub, Azure API Management, on Azure, on-premise, AWS, or even GCP. So read more about this massive announcement for your hybrid and multi-cloud ambitions by clicking the link I've included in the episode notes. Next, Microsoft is offering a cryptographically verified distributed ledger as a part of Azure SQL. This feature, which is now in public preview, greatly lessens the amount of work needed to set up a verified data store and also reduces the maintenance required to keep it up and running. This service stores cryptographic hashes of each database transaction using a similar pattern to what you would see with blockchain to verify the contents of your database. The great thing about this service is that you don't need any working knowledge of blockchain to take advantage of this feature. You can simply use Azure SQL as you always have. Now this service supports two types of tables, updatable tables and append only tables. 
Read more about this feature with the tech community post that I've linked to in the episode notes. Elasticsearch and other tools from Elastic have become essential elements of modern cloud applications. Microsoft has provided a new way to deploy the Elastic platform on Azure by working directly with Elastic, the company that maintains these solutions. With this option, you can launch different elements of the Elastic platform onto Azure directly from the Azure Marketplace. This takes the heavy lifting of configuring the needed infrastructure and letting those that know the platform best manage that for you. This approach also enables unified billing with your Azure subscription, all while enabling you to get support directly from the support engineers at Elastic. This solution is currently available in preview. Now we're gonna hear multiple announcements and updates about WebSockets here in this episode. And the first one is a new service designed for large scale real-time web applications, Azure Web PubSub. This preview release enables you to leverage this service to create rich interactive experiences such as chat experiences, whiteboards, real-time location maps, dashboards, and much more. This service is designed to take the complex infrastructure challenges of creating a low latency WebSocket experience out of the equation. The current samples that are provided give examples of leveraging the service in C Sharp, Python, Java, and JavaScript. I've provided a link to the quick start so you can dive in and see if this fits your use case. So next we have our platform updates. And while these might not be as big as our featured announcements, many of these can still impact the way that you leverage the platform. Now, first, Microsoft is now integrating Azure Security Center with GitHub Actions by enabling you to scan your containers within GitHub Actions. This feature, which is in public preview, enables you to get an overview within Azure Security Center of your security posture of the containers in your CI CD pipeline. Now, we just need to decide what we call this. Is this DevSec Git Cloud Ops? I don't know. <laughs> I'll leave that part up to you. Next up, we have a follow up on a platform update from last month. The Microsoft build of the OpenJDK is now generally available. In addition, Microsoft announced several things focused at Java developers, and you can dive into each of those announcements by clicking the link I have included within the episode notes. Azure Bicep version 0.4 has been released. This is Azure's domain-specific language for defining cloud-based infrastructure. The release of this toolset includes an extensible linter, resource scaffolding, and the transition of templates to the ARM template quick start GitHub repo. If you haven't yet checked out Bicep, this is a perfect time to jump in and give it a try. Although I'll give you a warning, you won't want to go back to creating ARM templates the old way. There is now native WebSocket supports within API management. Although the feature is currently just in public preview, so not generally available yet, it does include the ability to secure your WebSocket APIs by using existing access control policies, the ability to test your WebSocket APIs, from the Azure and developer portal and the ability to gather and analyze metrics and logs for those APIs. This public preview will be a bit staggered in release, but it'll begin rolling out this month, so you should see it soon. Now, Logic Apps have received a significant update, which enables it to run on the same containerized environment as Azure Functions. Now this, when paired with the earlier featured announcement about running Azure application services anywhere, this gives Logic Apps a lot of new possibilities for hosting. In addition, Microsoft has also provided a VS Code extension for local development of Logic Apps. Check out the link in the episode notes for more of the updates to Logic Apps. Next, it's even easier to add managed certificates to Azure App Service since App Service Managed Certificates is now generally available. This no-cost option for certificates makes it easy to add certificates that cover both the Apex domain and any subdomains, and it doesn't matter whether you're hosting on Windows or Linux. These certificates will work on both. Next, we have a few updates with some sub-features of Azure ML becoming generally available. First, we have data labeling, and this tool gives you a central place to manage your image labeling projects within Azure ML. It supports a wide range of labeling needs, including multi-label, multi-class, bounded boxes, and image segmentation polygons. The next Azure ML feature to become generally available is ML flow support. This gives you a standards-based way to manage your overall training and deployment process. You can get information on both of these within the episode notes. Now, last month, we introduced Azure Communication Services. And this month, I wanted to let you know that the React UI library for this service is now in public preview. This initial version provides composite components that make it even easier 
to integrate calling and chat experiences within your web application. Microsoft also announced that both call recording and direct routing for Azure communication services would be available for preview sometime this month. Read all about the updates for Azure communication services in the episode notes. Next, I know that many of you have already tried out Azure Static Web Apps, but I'm glad to announce that this service is now generally available. Now, this service was introduced in the middle of 2020, and it's targeted at full-stack web applications. This release even adds the ability to use an Azure Functions project as the API for your web applications. Every person working in the cloud has to deal with the challenge of determining how to continually improve their skill set. This is a problem that we're going to help you solve here on Cloud Tracker. And today I'm going to share several resources that can help you up level your skills on Microsoft Azure. First, we have a new video course designed at helping you deploy applications in Azure Kubernetes Service or AKS. This course covers the Azure specifics that you will need to know, even if you already have Kubernetes experience, including how to integrate. AKS with the Azure Container Registry, how to configure storage in AKS, and how to integrate AKS with the Azure Key Vault. If you know Kubernetes, but you haven't used it within AKS, this is a great course to get you started. Next, if you're interested in learning more about Cosmos DB, or if you're looking to achieve your Azure Developer Certification, I have a course that I authored on developing solutions with Cosmos DB. This course will cover key concepts about how you model data in Cosmos DB, as well as leveraging its server-side capabilities with change feed notifications, triggers, stored procedures, and user-defined functions. Finally, if you want hands-on experience managing the deployment and configuration of virtual machines with Azure Resource Manager templates, there is a new lab in the Pluralsight library that will guide you through exactly that. This lab will give you the ability to work within a real Azure environment, even if you don't have an Azure subscription yourself. It will cover everything from Azure Cloud Shell custom script extensions, and even exporting a deployment as an ARM template. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Cloud Tracker. Be sure to let us know what you want to hear more of on this series moving forward. Also, remember that the links to everything I have discussed are available within the episode notes. If you know of other people who would benefit from this content, be sure to share it with them. In addition, you can also join me for the latest news for both AWS and GCP, on the Cloud Tracker series for those platforms, and they should be available on YouTube as well. Be sure to come back next month where I'll be joining you from the new Pluralsight headquarters in Salt Lake City to give you the latest on Microsoft Azure here on Cloud Tracker.